Jellyfish. What are they? What significance do they have? And why am I making a video on them? Well, a short explanation to what they are is that they're just NPCs in Splatoon that walk around in Goblis wearing various clothes, and you can be observing them. They can actually look at you when you walk up to them. You could bob around their head to show that you don't care about their boundaries. They're also like little Easter eggs that appear in literally stages that are not limited to. Urchin Underpass, Walleye Warehouse, Sp Salt Spray Rig, Arowana Mall, Black Valley Skate Park, Port Mackerel, Kelp Dome, Bluefin Depot, Moray Towers, Camp Triggerfist, Flounder Heights, Hammerhead Bridge, Museum de Alfonsino, New Albacore Hotel, Mahi Mahi Resort, Piranha Pet, Anchovy Games, Manta Maria, Mako Mart, Wahoo World. <gasps> Like I mentioned before, in the plaza or square, you can actually interact with them by, like, bopping their heads from up and down, so... You know what that means! Okay, so what you want to do first is open up the game and get to the news. Make sure that you have to just spam the A button. You have to be doing this for a while because it should take about 30 seconds. Next, what you need to do is just find the nearest jellyfish to your spawn, and then just go to town on the squid bagging. Make sure you corner them and you and you separate them from most jellyfish so they can't go out and ask for help. But just ignore the other jellyfish that's watching that other person do some awesome moves. This may take a while. We're trying to annoy him by making him leave. So technically moving him doesn't count. He may just look at you. And there we go. We also need to talk about the significance they have to the actual game and lore. So we ha have to bring in the two most important lore-wise to Splatoon, which is Jelfonzo and Jellonzo. Jellonzo being the t-shirt shop owner from the first game, and Jelfonzo being the t-shirt shop owner from the second game. They're, the two are actually related since Jelonzo is Jelfonzo's brother. And Jelfonzo has this thing where he's like really good at these types of trading card battles as soon as in the Sunken Scrolls of the second game. It's also notable to mention that Jelfonzo and Jelonzo are the only jellyfish that we know of that can actually speak the same language as the Inkling. Jelonzo just probably learned it just so he could just go overseas overseas to just sell his products. Which I mean like I can understand. One thing to understand about jellyfish is that they're all part of a hive mind. And we have this very bizarre piece of official art depicting how they reproduce. And yes, it is from the Splatoon 1 credits. So yeah, whenever you go to one of the stages like Mahi Mahi Resort and see those two jellyfish lovers they're not actually lovers, they just want to be jellyfish lovers. It's also another thing to note that they're actually pretty powerful in the Splatoon world. Uh, Hisashi no Gami, well, the Splatoon god, uh, went on to state that they also sponsor and possibly control the Turf Wars, which are probably the most important or popular sport that the Inklings play. So yeah, they're kind of important in Splatoon lore. Also, yeah, there's just... Apparently, they can change colors. You can see this primarily through Splatfest and this Valentine's post from 2019. And I know there's a question that every single Splatoon 2 player, or every Splatoon player in general, wants to know. Why do jellyfish touch the ground, or at least touch puddles? Well, simple answer, they're just drinking water. None of that morbid stuff. Huh. Help me! What? 